Okay, we are live. Thank you for joining us on another recording of the Managing Partners podcast. I'm Kevin Daisy. I'm your host. And I'm also the founder of Array Digital, where we help law firms grow their case pipeline by using digital marketing. So I have a special guest today coming out of Cleveland, Ohio, Sandra Kelly. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So first question, like I always ask is, you know, really want to know your story, how you became an attorney and how you ended up where you are today. So if you would give us, uh, you know, the story, give us the quick. Sure. Uh, I am very much a non-traditional <laughs> uh, <laughs> pathway to attorney. Um, I went to Ohio State. I really love landscape architecture. I used to have a business when I was young. I um, got a degree in horticulture and agriculture education. I wanted to teach horticulture at the college level, preferably at Ohio State. And unfortunately, there was not a job to be had when I got my master's degree. So during my master's degree, I took a number of MBA courses, in, including a law course. And I had never been exposed to the law. I have no family members in it. And um, I got an A in the course. I got the A in the course. And the professor <laughs> the was the chairman of the department. And he came to me and he said, you know, I see you're in grad school, but he's like, I think you have an affinity to this. So he said, if you ever decide you want to go to law school, let me know. Um, I'll write a recommendation letter or two for you. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of filed it away. And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. And then, of course, I couldn't find a job. So I tried desperately to make my horticulture dreams come true. They did not. But um, I went back to this professor. He wrote me a wonderful recommendation. And I got into Pepperdine Law School with it. And I got a substantial scholarship because I really had no money to go to law school. And, you know, at that point, the looming loans were a consideration. So Pepperdine gave me like a 50% ride. So I proceeded out there and, you know, have really never looked back, but it is definitely a different path than what I envisioned really growing up. Well, I mean, truthfully, I've, I've had a lot of great interviews on this show and um, there's definitely the ones that are born and then became an attorney, um, but, uh, or uh, their grandma said they had to be one or, you know, or their family is attorneys. Uh, but there's a lot of you folks that that have a similar story, I think, that weren't really sure, tried to go a different path, and ended up somehow crossing, you know, the law path and, and deciding that, to jump on that. So um, I've heard quite a cool, you know, a lot of cool stories. Like one guy was a mechanical engineer, and then he's now a patent attorney, which makes a lot of sense. But it does. Um, <laughs> it's it's helpful for sure. But um, so, you know, I think it's pretty cool to hear the different stories and, and your story is as unique as, as any of them. So, um, so tell us a little bit more uh, about the firm and, uh, you know, everything from, you know, the Nasos Ray Robinson Law. Uh, looks like it has a, a rich history and has been around for quite a long time. So tell us a little bit about the firm and uh, the history of that and, and what the practice area, what the focus is. Sure. Um by history, we are now the oldest continually operating firm in um, Cleveland. Our wow. had beat us and then they kind of exploded and went their separate ways. So we have been in existence since the 1870s. By history, we are an Admiralty Maritime firm. So we were in basically the same building as all of the um, giant freighter companies that a lot of them were headquartered here in Cleveland in the 1870s in the Rockefeller building. And likewise, our firm spent, I think, 40, 50 years in the Rockefeller building representing all of those companies. As the younger generations came up, um, we had a Chicago office for about 40 years, which was wonderful. I practiced in Chicago quite a bit as a young associate going over and assisting our, our senior attorneys there in a number of federal court admiralty cases. So it was a varied practice. We go anywhere on the Great Lakes. So I would be in Duluth in January. I would be in <laughs> Buffalo during snowstorms, you name it. If it was a coastal Great Lakes port, we served it. And we had a number of attorneys that were Excellent. practiced in federal court. 
We also made it to the U.S. Supreme Court on a number of admiralty issues. Uh, before me, every one of our senior partners had appeared in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. And um, that was, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when admiralty issues were of interest to that court. And it was kind of easy to get in there and get an issue heard. So that's a very rich history. Um, the predecessor firm was Ray Robinson, Carl Davies and Snyder, um, all preeminent attorneys. We've morphed like most have into the two name genre, Ray Robinson, way easier for the receptionist. <laughs> say. Um, but in any event, uh, many of our partners have retired or have died. And I was the youngest partner by 14 years. So probably there was always the view that eventually this was going to end up to be my baby. And I became managing partner, the youngest they ever had, about five years before the major partners had retired. They made me managing partner. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a wild ride. We now do probate and estate work. And we do a lot of, interestingly, unclaimed funds cases for large estates. We have developed a practice in that. And that's a multi-state practice where I get to work with a lot of other really cool lawyers in other states putting these claims together. And then finally, we do a lot of surety bond work. So we work for the surety companies that bond out um, criminals. And we handle the larger bond forfeitures and that type of thing. And I do that all over the state. And we just got a case accepted to the Ohio Supreme Court. So that's pretty cool. I have never been in the Ohio Supreme Court before. So uh, lots of really interesting things in the generation of the firm. That's excellent. Well, that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And, um, uh, you know, kind of the history of that and, and how things have kind of changed and morphed as well. And then the two name thing is, I think I have, you know, we have law firms as clients and there's some that I still have to go. What is the name of the, the whole name of the firm? It's, it's hard to say some of the, the last names. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And you got like four or five sometimes it's it gets a little ridiculous but uh ours was ridiculous and of course i'm never going to be named in it because nobody <laughs> knows kelly they all know ray robinson so we're smart enough to know you stick with brand. what your market knows yep that's good no i like that what you've done with that and so next question um maybe related to marketing but so you've kind of got into some new areas um and so what it what it really has worked well as far as getting clients and, and especially in those new areas, but um, uh, what's worked well for the firm? Let's say, in the, you know, since you've been managing partner, what are some of the things that you've done that uh, have worked well to get your name out there or to pick up new clients, especially if you've moved into this new space and kind of rebranded? Absolutely. Probably one of the best things that, that I've done is we're in a non-competitive legal network of worldwide lawyers called Legus Law. And we get our own territories. So you're not competing with other attorneys within that sector, oh. but yet we have a ton of cross referrals going on. So I can be asked, do you know an attorney in Germany? And I do, and I've met him and he's vetted and he's great. And that's been a tremendous widening of our catch, if you will. And we've been with that network for 25 years. We've never, oh, wow. we've been approached by many other bigger networks with a wider reach, but this one works for us since we're a small to medium firm. Our firm has morphed to where we have three attorneys, but we work with many, many more. So if we have a particular case, we now will associate, if I have a big maritime case, I have a big maritime death case right now, I'm associating with Annapolis, Maryland Council on it. Um, we pull in talent from all over the country because the most important thing for us is to be successful for the client. And we want to go into this and be winners coming out. So we've really kind of gotten into loose associations with other law firms and it has paid off in spades. And I think the cross referral is what keeps a law firm vibrant. And it's not the old staid where everybody does the work within the law firm and you pass it down to the associates and you and you don't associate with other firms. I think that that's short-sighted in this day and age. You know, yeah, yeah, bring in the best resources you can, right? So to Absolutely. get the job done and, and get it done right. So 
Uh, excellent. Well, I think that's great. And so what was the name of that group again for anyone listening? It's called okay. Legus Law, L-E-G-U-S, L-A-W. If you go to our website, it's all over our website, but they are wonderful. And in fact, I have a couple of open jurisdictions in the United States. So if anybody visits our website and goes to Legus Law and you're an open jurisdiction, please get in touch with me. I'm on the advisory board and I can talk to you. Excellent. Making that go further. Awesome. Yeah. Anyone listening, uh, please reach out. And um, her website is just below. So it's rayrob.com. It's just nice and sweet. Short, it I like it. Short. <laughs> Man, um, some of the, the website addresses that come on here are pretty long. So <laughs> that's good to have a nice short. But yeah, go check our website. It sounds like you can access uh, that group through there. And uh, it looks like I see in the bottom uh, corner of your website, the, you have a logo for it. So uh, yeah, check that out. Check out her website. You can find more about her firm, more of the history about the firm as well uh, through the website. Um, so What's really, you know, the the plans, obviously COVID is around still. Things have been a little bit different. Are you uh, in the office, virtual at home, hybrid model? What are you guys doing? Uh, we, I come to, as a managing partner, I come to the office at least for a few hours every day because we are still getting receipt of original documents that we need to file with courts. Even if it is e-filing, we're still needing signed documents. Um, we have three excellent full-time employees, and then we have one part-time paralegal, and we let them work remotely. They take turns coming in the office, and our office model, we've greatly reduced. Actually, prior to COVID, we greatly reduced our kind of office footprint because we were spending a lot of money in rent, and there just wasn't really a good reason for it. So having reduced it makes us kind of leaner and meaner. My of counsel attorneys will come in the office when we need to consult. Otherwise, sometimes I meet them at a Starbucks. I meet them at their houses. <laughs> and we just maintain a very kind of, um, there's no rule. It's whatever is seen to be working. I mean, sometimes, let's be honest, Zoom meetings don't work. And you need to sit side by side when you're calculating things or looking at very, complicated issues. It, it, it's good to be in the room and be live. Yeah. So we haven't eliminated that. I don't see law firms eliminating that because I think the effectiveness will suffer. Um, Zooms are wonderful for routine sorts of things. I don't yeah. think Zooms are wonderful for depositions. I've done them for mediations. I've done them. I don't like it. You can't yeah. read body language and that sort of thing. So I really... I enjoy the modern hybrid kind of model that we're all kind of tripping into due to the pandemic. And I think we can take advantage of that to make it less expensive for our clients, more efficient for us, but yet not lose the personal touch. Yeah, no, I, I think so too. And that's kind of what we've gone as my firm, which we do marketing, but um, you know, we were, we were moving more virtual before the pandemic as well. Um, and we do digital marketing. So, Right. A little bit different, but um, but of course, since COVID, all our hiring has been pretty much remote, folks, because we want the best talent, and you know, not always local, unfortunately. So, but you uh, don't well. necessarily need them to be either. I mean, if you no. want to get the best talent, and they're in LA, and you want that niche, kudos to you. Yeah, exactly. So it's been helpful, but we still have an office. I'm in the office today. We have a few folks here, most of our leadership team, and it, it's. Something about sitting around the table, yeah. we're having like a really serious strategy meeting, you know, where the company's going or ideas that we have. Sometimes it's just helpful to sit in the room and, and get it done. Um, definitely had a lot of attorneys say that a lot of trial attorneys, like they do not like the Zoom stuff. They want to be in front of people, um, especially if it's a jury and stuff like that. So it's they feel handicapped if they can't be in the room. Um, but I've also had a lot of folks. Be, there's a lot of efficiencies that can they can try you know have more cases in the state further away than where they were just focused on their city. Um, so it's you know I think there's pros and cons. I think the hybrid model will be probably what'll stick around most. So well, that's cool to hear. Um, but I, I like your approach to it. Whatever's working, you know, is if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, and then of course keeping your expenses down and not having to have a big fancy office. 
in the best location in town, you know, I don't think it's necessary. So. Yeah, you're going to pay for a conference room square footage every month to Zoom with your clients. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, makes no sense. Yeah, good point. But yeah, I mean, figure some of the, the big flashy firms or the PI firms that have the, the big, beautiful offices, you know, I assume that cost is being passed on to the clients somehow or another. So of course it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be right. Um, so what is the plans for you, for the firm? You know, what are you thinking? Uh, coming out of COVID, hopefully uh, things will settle down, but, uh, you know, business as usual. But what's what's kind of your plans for the next couple of years? Like what's what's next? Are you bringing on more attorneys? Are you in growth mode? You know, what, what's that I, I don't like? know so much that we're in growth mode. I, I like the two attorneys that, you know, kind of captively work for me now. Um, but like I said, we have some big cases where I have associated other one set of attorneys in Huron, which is about an hour away. So I see them every couple months and we talk about the case. They're wonderful to work with. So I see developing that relationship with them further because we just kind of vibe. I think my apprehension in bringing on laterals is uh, you have to feed constantly. And I tend to be the vast majority of the rainmaker in the firm. So I get the business in and then I kind of, um, you know, give it out as, as it is. So, and the other attorneys enjoy not having to do marketing or rainmaking. They would rather <laughs> do the work. So, yeah. we, you know, we all have our role. So in two to five years, I see more relationships developing with like-minded firms that like to partner together. I mean, I think the big thing in partnering with a firm in the future of it is the client does not get double charged. You yeah. each bring your unique spin or talent to that case and you make sure that you're not duplicating your efforts and the client quickly sees, wow, I'm getting a really good bang for my legal buck. And yeah. that's what keeps them coming back and referring you and your law firm to other people. So I kind of see that in the future. I don't see myself with baby lawyers, but you know, I say that and then they're <laughs> the perfect baby lawyer may land in my lap and I say, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll bring you on. But to not have that pressure of having to feed a giant machine just yep. has made the practice of law fun for me again. It wasn't fun for a while and it is fun for me. And I can also say, you know, we don't gel. I don't really think I want to take your case on. Let me refer you to this person. And I have the freedom to do that. You know, a few years ago, I got to take it because we need freedom because I had answered others. So. Yeah. I think that's great. You know, you got to do you and, do what you know do what you want to do but i think that's a, that's a cool approach and i think um yeah when you have all those folks underneath you you got to take care of them you got to um you know, deal with all those ish, other issues with the you know that comes with having a bunch of folks underneath you that work for you and then yeah you got to feed them and i think you know some firms each attorney i mean they're basically their own business owner they got to bring in their own business uh, or they're looking for the firm to to feed them and bring in the business for them so and that can come at a big expense. But a lot of what we kind of do, we do just marketing for law firms. So we try to help drive that. So the firms that are in growth mode, um, it's, it's a constant, you know, feeding the machine, if you will. So, but hey, you gotta do what you wanna do. And I appreciate you sharing, you know, kind of your perspective and, and where you wanna go. So, well, is there anything else you wanted to share um, with anyone else uh, as you know, we wrap it up? I, I kind of think we've covered it. <laughs> and you're in Cleveland, Ohio. You said it's, I think well, we're in Virginia. So same kind of climate we got going on. It's fall, everyone. Winter's approaching quickly. Fall, yeah. It's fall, y'all. Um, everyone listen, please check out um, her website, rayrob.com. The easiest website address I've had on the show. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> we learn more and, and connect with her. I think check out... Um, uh, what was the name of the uh, the group again? Uh, again, it's Legus Law, L-E-G-U-S-L-A-W. You pop that into your browser and it'll pop up and it, it's worldwide. We have, I think we're at 83 firms worldwide. And oh, wow. we do have some open jurisdictions, but um, again, contact me and um, 
I think they're a wonderful group and it's a, it's a wonderful source of referrals. Excellent. That's, that's huge value. Um, so everyone, yeah, check out her website, check her out and connect with her. Is there any other way to connect with you other than that? Uh, using any social media, LinkedIn? Uh, yeah, LinkedIn, Sandra Kelly, uh, Ray Robinson, both of them pop up on LinkedIn on our website. Um, we have the good old fashioned telephone for people who want to pick up and chat. What's that? I know. What is that? Um, but, uh, you know, we do use Facebook, but probably not to the extent that we should. But uh, I think LinkedIn's pretty well developed. And sure, you know, or drop us a line off the website. We have a, a chat page. Okay. Well, everyone, please do that. Reach out to her if you got any questions or just want to connect or possibly have any, um, you know, referrals that you can work on together. So um, check out this. Uh, so uh, Sandra will have this up on our website soon. Great. A copy of this episode will also be up on our podcast, YouTube. Uh, it'll be shared on my LinkedIn. Uh, so you can be able to check that out soon as well. Uh, but go to raylaw.com forward slash podcast. Uh, Sandra will be featured up there soon. We also have the um, the Managing Partners newsletter. So this is uh, goes out. I might be wrong. It might be weekly. <laughs> I think if we're, I never know what weekly or ever two weeks at this point. But uh, it'll feature uh, a couple episodes the upcoming episodes each week, plus some other really cool stuff, um, law related marketing and, and other cool things in that newsletter. So uh, if you're on here as a guest, you're automatically entered into that. So Sandra, congratulations. Thank um, you. <laughs> but uh, if anyone's interested to join that, reach out to us as well. And uh, it's got some really good content. It features some really amazing uh, managing partners and uh, Sandra will probably be featuring that soon. And then if you need any help with marketing, websites, stuff like that, that's what we do. We help law firms, uh, whether it's just presence and professionalism, uh, reputation, or driving leads and traffic, uh, we, we kind of handle all that stuff. So if you need anything like that, reach out to me or go to reallaw.com and we're happy to help you. Sandra, anything else before we go? No, thank you. It's been such a pleasure meeting you. Yes, thanks for sharing your story. I, I, I like to hear everyone's, uh, you know, journey to how they became an attorney um and it's, it's cool to have those ones that you know are not uh, traditional i guess if you will so <laughs> appreciate you sharing that today thank so you. we'll say goodbye everyone thank you for uh being on another episode and listen to us today and we'll talk